Hi, I'm Mark Clegg and welcome to the Photographer Academy and today we're doing a kind of fitness style of lighting and we've got a kind of before and after model. That's the after. <laughs> That's the after when you do all the work. Jay's uh, with us today. It's the first time we shot with Jay. Uh, and don't get that confused with photo training for you, Jay, yeah, from years ago. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to be um, sculpting the body, uh, and this is a perfect kind of tutorial for you in part one, where we're exploring the different lighting positions which will emphasise the body and power. Um, if we cut to the chase, though, even though we're using two strip boxes to begin with, that's all, okay? We've got these kind of long, tall strip boxes, one on the left, one on the right, so one at the three o'clock, one at the nine o'clock. Um, we're really looking at uh, kind of position, uh, positioning them. In, in a normal way, the simplest thing to uh, kind of get straight to the chase with sandwich light the subject between the white light. In other words, the light is the pieces of bread, and then basically the subject is the fill-in, all right? If you think of it like that, the kind of the light will always come from the sides. However, to emphasize body shape and tone, uh, instead of kind of just running a light at say the four o'clock position and the 10 o'clock position, because that is technically still a sandwich light, by kind of running them here, where we've got the kind of three o'clock and the nine o'clock position, we're gonna get a, a different kind of quality of light. Um, the first thing I'll say is that soft box is best box. Um, why? Because it's going to give you a very, very softer use of the light. And um, obviously, if we start to actually use less contrast the light, like feathering the light and so on, e even with a harder light source, technically, the light will be softer um, than basically a soft box directed onto the subject. So it's a bit weird, I know but a feathering of the light is always going to be the softest part of the light as well within things. What we're looking to use the softbox for is the kind of the uh, transfer around from highlight to shadow. And that's obviously what will give us the dynamic kind of muscle tone within the image itself and things really. Uh, let's just shut up for a minute, okay? Let's just take the first shot so you can see what we've got. So, uh, Jay, um, let's go kind of quite tough for now, mate. Sorry about that. Um, Nice and tense, take a breath, straight at me, lower the chin a touch more, lower the chin, lower, there you go, straight at me, great. Okay, so that's our one light. Let's look at the other light. And me again, please, Jay, just lower the tone, and let's do both lights. Okay, relax. So you can see, obviously, what we've got, yeah? Relax, Jay, sorry. Um, we've got our three different images. We've got light coming in from the right, light coming in from the left, and then we've obviously got the kind of the light coming in from the both sides. And by doing that already, you can see that real muscle tone beginning to pop without any trouble. Um, really what we're going to be looking at more in part two is we're looking at the kind of the advance. So adding more and more lighting into the shot to make it a little bit more commercial uh, as far as the image is concerned. But straight away, two lights, pretty much you've got a great image. Yeah. Um, if you've got it perfectly, so um, if you're looking for a hatchet light, you can see that because the light is slightly behind the nine o'clock position and slightly behind the, uh, the three o'clock position, we've actually got very, uh, an almost black line running down the nose, running down the chin, and then coming down the actual body right down to the crotch. Um, that's kind of a hatchet light. So it means it's kind of, it's an American term, um, but it means it's almost like you've got a hatchet and you've split the person in half. And um, that's that kind of uh, black line that you would have just before the kind of body starts to actually peel apart and things really. And that is because we've kind of just put those lights slightly behind the nine and slightly behind the three o'clock position. Um, so let's um, just do that shot again. Let's just do the hands on hips again. Lower the chin a little bit more for me, uh, Jay. That's great, mate. God, I wish, I used to have a body like yours. In, 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 in my dreams, but that's it, yeah. Okay, so if I just move the light in now from the kind of the, the reverse uh, behind position to the frontal position, um, it's the easier, more kind of get away with it shot. Let's do the same thing again. Okay, so no change in exposure there at all. But now you can see we've begun to actually light the tonal part of the body. So if we do that comparison between the two, 
the image where the light is slight, slightly behind the nine and slightly behind the three, so in other words, between the nine o'clock and the 10 o'clock position, and between the three o'clock and the two o'clock position, we've got more drama within the photograph itself. Whereas when we look at the image on the right-hand side, where we've brought it now at the true three and the nine o'clock position, we've kind of begun to lose a little bit more of the dynamite as far as the wow factor is concerned. And we start to actually get a little bit more into the av average lighting and everything else with it and things really. So that's, that's kind of the first thing, accept it. So light from behind will always give us a slightly more dynamic image than uh, anything else. Let's just put these now at the, the kind of the true 10 o'clock position. Uh, remember, because I've got honeycombs on these lights, they really do need, or honeycomb grids, I should say, uh, or egg, egg crate grids, if you're old-fashioned like I am. <laughs> For obvious reasons, it looks like when you see it out flat, basically you can put all eggs in each of the, diff, uh, the different cells. Okay, so we've got the lights coming in from behind now. Let's do the same shot again. Sorry, Jake. It's all about the face, mate. Or in your case, the body. Um, you can see already, whoa, absolutely powerful image straight away because we've kind of gone now to even more power. So we've taken the light from the kind of just behind the nine. Then we showed, showed you the kind of the, the probably the way that most of you would actually put that light to begin with actually to kind of give him light. But I always believe that one light to do one job. Yeah, we talk about that a lot. So when we're kind of putting the lights from uh, the sides, we're, we're basically looking to actually light muscle. Forget about the face, forget about the front of the body and all that kind of thing for a minute. We can do that in a separate light. But re uh, really what we want to achieve is this kind of more powerful dynamic image straight away. Um, I was really lucky early on in my career, a guy walked through my uh, shop premises as it were, and it was the manager of uh, a Cardiff bo boxer and overnight, he'd become what they referred to as the Cinderella man. It was a guy called Steve. Um, and his manager said, we need photographs, but we need them ASAP. He's won this fight he should never have won. And basically, we need images. Uh, and Steve Robinson went on to actually kind of really kind of become quite fa fa famous in the world of boxing. But again, we did a kind of bit of an exchange. Uh, Steve became a little bit of a celebrity. I needed a bit of celebrity to pre uh, present some awards. So we basically, we gave him photography in exchange for his, his kind of talent, in other words, who, who he was and things really. But in exactly the same way, when I was shoot, shooting the Steve Robinson kind of se uh, the series of images, this is where we would have begun. From here though, we start then to actually bring even more power to that image and because we're photographing in color and jay's skin tone in fact is absolutely it's beautiful yeah he obviously takes great care uh, care of his body but the tone is beautiful and that's what our job is as photographers to make sure we kind of really then bring out all the pores all the energy all the actual uh, muscle and everything else and that's what we're doing to begin with we've put these lights in from behind and we're creating this little bit more dynamic. So when you start to actually really want to bring this alive, bring more dynamic into the position of the light and it will kind of change the photograph. If you're then looking to add some more lighting actually onto the face, then use a separate light. So we always start these kind of part one films into if I've only got two lights, what could I do and where would we position them? I think that's fair then because at least you're not worrying about whether you've only got two speed lights or two studio flash. Um, but actually being able to combine the flashes together will then actually take it to another dynamic. Right, before we kind of uh, uh, finish, we'll, we'll, we'll look at actually the sandwich lighting technique again. So we're going to leave the light that is on the nine o'clock position, okay, or it is now at the 10 to the 11. And we're going to move the one closest to me from its kind of two o'clock position around to the, the kind of almost four o'clock position. So if you kind of look now, I'm not sure how easy that can be seen on, oh, you can in fact. Um, can we go to the other camera, the high up? You can see from there, if we ignore the high camera, the camera on the boom arm for a minute, but we can see that J pretty much is in the middle of the kind of the two light sources, yes? So as long as they're equal distance apart, it allows us to actually kind of move the lights within the scene and still get a great expo exposure without having to move, uh, 
green meter all the time. So let's kind of just show the uh, sandwich, light, sandwich lighting again. Lower the chin a little bit more for me. Excellent. So now we've got the light coming in from the 10 o'clock, and then we've got the light coming in from the kind of the 4 o'clock position. We'll do that again because it's a really nice shot, but the expression's bad. Okay, so I didn't con concentrate. Lower the chin again a little bit, a little bit eyes at me. A little bit more aggressive in the look. Oh, light, love it, Jane. You the man. Uh, okay, so we've got a real kind of dy uh, dynamic coming through with it. So if we've only got those two light sources as such, the sandwich lighting to begin with, we know is going to work, all right? Uh, and it'll work in exactly the same way. If I pop this one back again to where it was, it would help if I put it behind there. Otherwise, it's going to get close, too close to J. And then we move the other light to the other side a minute. Oh. So now we move this one to the sandwich. We'll get exactly the same shot, but kind of in uh, reverse, as it were. Let's do it. Brilliant. So we can see we've mimicked it. Exactly the same shot. Um, I think the lighting, as we had it in the first shot, is better for uh, the physique uh, of Jay. I think the tonality that we've got and the detail in the actual tattoos as well is much more pleasing being lit. And as far as the body sculpting is concerned, that's kind of doing its job. Whereas in the next image, we're kind of blowing out the tattoos just that little bit more. And, and even though it still looks sexy as hell, it's kind of what are we trying to do as far as the dynamics. So for me, if I was doing a photograph for Jane, he goes, right, I need a quick body shot. My agent says, uh, I need to show off my tats. Uh, I need to actually have real kind of muscle tone and everything else. So we, uh, we usually say, right, hit the, hit the floor and give me 10. <laughs> Because that'll kind of really bump it up a little bit, won't it? And then basically get up, do the shot, bit of sweaty kind of look with it, or baby oil on the body, and we're getting there. But for me, for his agent, in fact, I'd probably be shooting it in this style. And the reason being is it's a truer representation of Jay and his body. So in other words, if he's got kind of companies interested in taking him on, and he's going to feature in marketing, advertising, whatever it would be, then they really want to see what he is like. So remember, remember, it's going to be one thing for you photographically and another thing for him and his agent and so on. So just don't get carried away with what you want to do. You obviously got to do your job still to begin with. So for me, that's the easy shot. That's the kind of the more dynamic as far as we're, hide, we're hiding a bit of the tattoos there and everything else with it. But the other one kind of works. So, think about the positions. If you, if you ever see a photographer trying to kind of shoot bod body shots, and they've got pretty much um, both of the strip boxes or light sources uh, in front of, sub of subject, uh, pretty much what we're going to do is flatten all the effort he's made to look like that. <laughs> which I'm very jealous of, all right? But you can see now it's just flat and horrible and it really not doing anything for him at all. We, we definitely need to bring more lights in. If you need to flat light, for whatever reason it would be, you need to actually bring more lights in to actually start to actually sculpt the body. So as far as the uh, um, setup is concerned, we're using two strip boxes, both with double diffusion, so two layers of diffu uh, diffusion. Each has an egg crate on the front. They're equal distance apart from J, so it pretty much means as long as we keep them on that kind of diameter, we don't really need to re-meter the exposure all the time. We're, we've metered at 100 ISO for 5.6, but in fact, I've set the ISO to 400, uh, 400 so I can shoot at 11 with it. So if you're really looking at how you take your photography from this to much more dynamic, all we've got to do is think about the placement of the light and know that the, the more dynamic the position of the light, the more dynamic of the image you're actually going to get. So let's just finish off with more dynamite. Let's do that, please. Jay, again, lower the chin, bud. Look mean. And we know we're going to get that dy a dynamic with it. But of course, what we've really got to do is start to look at 
uh, bring in the uh, meter in, uh, sorry, meter, what am I about? I need to bring the light onto the face to actually make him pop more. So let's just finish this off. Let's meter onto Jay's face first from the honeycomb grid. And in part two, we're going to be looking at how we kind of use more of a an undiffused light. <clears throat> Five, six, perfect. Okay, so this is what this light will do. Keep it, it's lovely, and let's do it all together. Lower the chin, excellent. So you can see straight away what we've actually gone from, yeah? If you want to actually create amazing images, don't just opt for light at the front of the subject. You need to really, really think about how you're gonna create that dynamic image.